I I'm don't, not surprised. I'm not surprised, no. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of behind-the-scenes work that goes into this, both from our office and the, and the sheriff's office, and uh, there's just a lot of information to track down, and sometimes those things just take a little bit of time, but uh, I was very encouraged that we, we were able to pinpoint some suspects as, as soon as we did and uh, uh, get those folks off the street. It's too early to tell, I think. Okay. Um, this, this yeah, and I'd like to preface my comments with, you know, at this stage in the game, since we do have people that have been charged, ethically a lawyer, particularly a prosecutor, is under the fair trial, free press rules, and we cannot talk about the evidence in the case. However, there's a lot of additional things that we can talk about. Uh, just in reference to your answer, Jim, the um, the the life that a case takes on from the beginning to the solution is just it's a wonder to watch it's 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 a wonder to behold to watch a team of investigators in some instances 50 or more police officers and investigators working on one case around the clock for days and then sometimes weeks at a time and when you see that firsthand it's it's no surprise to you that you know the case is going to be solved it's just a matter of time and I think we're fortunate in this case that it was right around the one month mark. Because sometimes these cases can grow cold and linger for a lot longer. But in this case, the um, the enormity of the of the the crime called for a very robust law enforcement response, which from the beginning uh, was casting a huge wide net out into the world of possible suspects and then slowly bringing that net back in and watching it uh, begin to tighten around a, a select group of individuals and then to see that ripen into probable cause and then the bringing of charges so it's it wasn't really a surprise to, to me that they that they salt it in you know in essence within a month time and, and with given the, the resources with the number of different them. leads that they had and areas to follow initially I think I I told you all early on that I always felt that it was a matter of of uh, when, not if, and it's really kind of indescribable to see the volumes of the volume of information that that is coming in at this point. Even now, I mean, this investigation it has not slowed down at all. Activity in the area. As far as the overall gang activity, I don't think we take take this situation and say let's ha let's see what we can do to address this specific um, gang undercurrent that, that goes with this but we look at each individual case and there are as the sheriff indicated a, a fair number of cases that the same circle of people are all involved with and what we want to do is now analyze those and sp specifically um, formulate a strategy where by we can basically maximize our efforts uh, in the prosecutions. I think there's always you always have to have some concern and you have to take common sense safe precautions uh, regardless of whether or not you, you've got uh, this um, undercurrent of gang activity. Uh, is there something specific that people should be doing in response to it? Um, I'm not sure there's a, there's a good answer to that. Um, well, I, I think you just use your common sense and be aware of your surroundings. But, uh, you know, these, these things can happen anywhere, really. And uh, I don't think it depends upon the type of neighborhood. I mean, random crime is random crime. That's why it's called random, and it can happen anywhere. The, um, the good news is, I think, if you look at the communities within Loudoun County uh, and in Northern Virginia generally, the crime rate is relatively low with respect to violent crimes. Um, you know, there's, it ebbs and flows, it rises and falls, but it's been fairly consistently low over the years. The other factor that you need to think about in a more global way is, you know, I'm a lifelong Virginian. I grew up in this region my whole life, and I've seen it change. Well. You know, the population of Loudoun County now is nothing what it was like when I was, you know, 
a, a young younger person, say in high school or college, um, you know, 20 years ago, let's say, you take 250,000 people and you put them into one locality in the space of 15 years, you're going to see some dramatic changes in the types of cases that end up in the court system. I don't think anybody should be alarmed by that. Uh, perhaps it's that the information is brought to people quicker and more often, and they see these things uh, in, in different formats, the internet, uh, radio, television, news media, or newsprint rather. Um, so it, it seems a little overwhelming probably to the average person, but uh, in reality, this is still a safe community. Um, and we talk about this uh, from time to time, and everyone makes the comparison. You know, it wasn't like this when I was growing up, and uh, my parents didn't have to watch me 24-7, and I could go out and, and play in the neighborhood without having someone watch over me the whole time. And I think part of it is the difference between today and 10 years ago and 20 years ago is, is information. People have quicker access at, to information at their fingertips primarily the internet, but also the, the news media. The, the question has come up, uh, is this Bennett case gang related? And I'd say that's a, it depends what you mean by gang related, yes. Yeah, that's uh, not you, a legal term. Yeah. Gang related is just, it's not a legal term. Yeah. It's just so, something people want to know, is it related to, and the question becomes, what do you mean by it? Right. Anyhow, go and, and in the sense that they're individuals that are tied to gangs, well, then yes, it's gang related. Well, and, and also, it, you know, allegedly there are offenses that fall under uh, predicate acts for gang participation. So conceivably, some of the, you know, allegations involve uh, crimes that if a person's convicted of them in association with others, that um, that could qualify as gang participation. So it's that kind of relationship, conceivably, that could be involved. But, um, and, and if these are the types of crimes that you're seeing gang members commit, then then yes, yeah. in that aspect of it as I well. Think, but I think what was uh, what Sheriff Simpson was getting at and what a lot of people want to know, and I think you've addressed, Jim, is uh, the issue of a, a, an initiation or a gang ritual type thing. Right, of and, passage. Um, you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable commenting on whether it was or wasn't, but I, I think from a community safety perspective, there's nothing right now to indicate that anybody should be troubled or worried about gangs roving around trying to initiate people in Loudoun County based upon everything we know in the Bennett case. Right.